Hello everybody and welcome back to another review here on the Fortress of Solitude. Today we're going to be checking out Avengers Inc. Issue 1 by Al Ewing and Leonard Kirk. Janet Van Dyne becomes embroiled in a murder mystery as Whirlwind, one of her oldest villains, is killed while waiting trial in The Raft. And he isn't the only one as five other villains were also killed while in the prison, each with no sign of who or what did it despite a disembodied voice proclaiming that with their deaths justice has been served. Janet, intent on finding out who did this, begins her investigation and it requires her to do a little superheroing off the books. And thanks to Luke Cage's pull in New York as the mayor, she is given free reign, having to go sort of undercover thanks to the whole X-Men Orchis thing that's currently happening and how people are starting to view superheroes as a threat. Ewing goes full on into the murder mystery territory with this issue, making it more crime drama than superheroing, and it makes for a pretty compelling read, especially with Janet, one of the founding members of the Avengers and person who gave the team their name as the lead. It feels like we haven't had Janet be in anything besides her own solo series in quite a hot minute, so her taking over an Avengers book, you know, the team she started out with is great. Janet's investigation runs into a few twists and turns as she discovers that the supposedly dead villains aren't actually dead at all, and they end up coming out of their comas thinking that they're now part of some weird experiment or have been taken into some weird lab and they end up trying to kill Janet. The twists don't stop there as Whirlwind is revealed not to be Whirlwind at all and while he looks and sounds like Dave Cannon, he is actually Victor Shade, who for people who are familiar with Vision is one of the Vision's identities and one of his human identities, except this time Victor is now his own person it seemed. And because he's not a villain, he ends up helping Janet deal with the villains and ultimately ends up going out on a sort of worker release with with Janet who uses up some of Luke's goodwill with the raft and ends up forming the Avengers Incorporated with her which will be a team that deals with superheroing off the books and deals with crimes associated with superheroes. I'm really intrigued to see how Ewing is going to use this character since Shade still looks like Whirlwind, still looks like Dave Cannon, and he is sure to make it known that this villain was at one point utterly obsessed with Janet and stalked her for quite some time. So Janet having to team up with the man who looks like her stalker is sure to bring about some drama, and I'm quite looking forward to it and how she goes about dealing with that sort of trauma. The big question of the book though is who supposedly killed these villains and why? And that's that's what the final pages reveal as Hank Pym has returned and he, for whatever reason it's not really made clear yet, needed a speedster for his plans so he took Whirlwind and placed an android Victor Shade in his place. Not only that, but Eric O'Grady looks like he's working with Pym as his assassin, being the one who quote unquote killed the villains to cover up Hank abducting Whirlwind. Hank continues to show just how much of a world-class shitbag he is by replacing Janet's stalker with a man she must then team up with. It's also interesting that Ewing writes Hank as self-aware of what he did and how he immediately regretted using Whirlwind, but not because of what that would mean for Janet and what that would bring about in her life, but more so that it would potentially expose him and his plans. So I'm really looking forward to Hank and Janet running into each other in some way and learning about what Hank has been up to since I can't really remember the last time he was actually involved in a story. I do know there was that whole big Rage of Ultron story where he was combined with Ultron and then I believe that got reverted where he just became Hank again, but I can't remember the last time I read a story with him in it, so I'm very much looking forward to him coming back, and it's kind of like a getting the band back together sort of thing with Janet and now Hank, so what other Avengers are we going to get back together in this team? I am sure Vision is going to appear in some point thanks to Victor Shade now being involved, so I, and Hank also being involved, you know, Hank being his creator with Ultron and everything, so I'm very much looking forward to seeing what Ewing has in store for us since I think it's going to get a bit weird. Leonard Kirk also joins Ewing's mystery with some tonally fitting artwork that gives the book this great sort of 60s, 70s spy thriller feel. I really love how there's no costumes at all in the book. I like that it's all just hope in like civilian clothes and kind of trying to keep things down low and sort of casual because she doesn't want to draw any attention to herself. And I like that Luke is just lounging around in like a three-piece suit with jar 
harvest there, making them drinks. It feels very spy through a very, very James Bondish man from uncle. And I think it really fits the tone very well, especially because, you know, when the Avengers were formed, it was the 60s. So it very much invokes that feel of really early Avengers issues where it was set during the 60s. I'm very much looking forward to seeing more of Leonard's work. Uh, I like that the colors are all washed out and it gives everything a very stark, real look to it. And yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued to see where he's going to go next with the artwork with Hank and Eric also being involved and being the only ones who seemingly are wearing costumes, which is quite unique and quite interesting. The villains are the only ones in the colorful costumes this time around. Ewing and Kirk's Avengers Inc. issue one was a great start to a murder mystery spy thriller series headlined by a couple of the original Avenger team members. I'm really looking forward to seeing where this mystery goes just because there was just so many twists and turns in this first issue just to set everything up. I'm so happy that Hank Pym is back. I'm really looking forward to what Ewing will do with him as a sort of villain arc. And I'm really looking forward to having Janet back in the saddle as a main character again. I'm going to give this issue a 9 out of 10.